Welcome. We really do have um, several topics that we want to cover today, and I think um, some really good news that we want to cover today, and there's some exciting things happening in uh, Wichita, Kansas, and so I want to jump to some of that. But um, as we mentioned, there's going to be continuous traffic updates that we're going to try and provide at um, these briefings. One small one I want to mention, and certainly not small in any way, shape, or form, there's going to be a significant change in turning movements coming up at the um, Kellogg and Webb interchange. And so starting November 21st, there will be no more left turns allowed as you are heading east on Kellogg to turn left onto Webb Road. And I believe that's going to be then consistent for the duration of that project. And that's going to make significant life changes in the way people are traveling in that area. So no more left turns after November 21st at Kellogg and Webb. So we want to mention that. We will continue to provide updates. One of the things that um, you will be able to do is there, I, I believe they will have a U-turn at, at uh, is it Chateau, Chateau Street? that will start on November 21st. So there's, there's going to be ways for people to navigate, and people will figure out some of those ways to navigate. But the, uh, but the no left turn will certainly alter people's driving habits pretty significantly. We wanted to share that. We want to talk about some quality of life opportunities, and we have one coming up that's happening in the Vice Mayor's District. Fairmount Park is going to be having a ribbon cutting coming up. So we want to invite everyone next Monday to um, Fairmount Park at 10.30 in the morning. We're going to celebrate several things that's happening there. There's a new basketball court that was completed in the fall of 2015 at a cost of about, what is that, 2016 maybe, at a cost of about $50,000. This new court is on the park's east side. It was constructed by Kansas Paving. There's a new Food Soul, I guess that's right, Food Soul Court that was built by Builders Plus for a cost of about $281,000. These are the very first Food Soul Courts in our Wichita Park system. You might ask what Food Soul is. I know Gary plays it probably. Food Soul's like soccer on a smaller field with a smaller ball. And so that's going to be. Um, celebrated at that Fairmount Park ribbon cutting. Um, the courts are well represented in other countries. It will help us serve our diverse student population and it just provides the kinds of amenities that we want to see in our city. The courts include state-of-the-art lighting bleachers on the east side for spectators. We feel this is going to be a great beginning for the potential future of tournaments and teams from other cities. So um, these improvements are part of a larger plan to improve the Fairmount neighborhood and create a better sense of living well amenities that are available to both neighborhood residents, WSU students who live off campus. And it's um, something we encourage you to go experience next Monday at 1030. I'm sure the vice mayor will be there cutting the ribbon. So it's uh, great amenities for a neighborhood that um, certainly very deserving of improving the quality of life for Wichitans and college students alike. I want to talk briefly again, and you heard this the other day at our council meeting, about Kyoto Yushi. They're a uh, manufacturing company that is coming to Wichita, Kansas. And this is significant. This is, this is really significant. They're investing in Wichita, Kansas. So Kyoto Yushi is a as a uh, lubrication engineering company embarking on a joint venture in Wichita, the company's making significant investments in Wichita, Kansas. They're adding five jobs, direct jobs, they're adding 30 contract jobs, and they're investing over $35 million in Wichita, Kansas. I want to make sure people understand that these are the kinds of things that start putting us on the map. And we just had a site selector in Wichita just yesterday that um, I'm going to tell you 
was a little bit surprised by all of the great things that they saw in Wichita, Kansas. We talk about we're in that mid-tier city that's kind of starting a, a resurgence on its own. And, and I believe that we surprised the site selector because he wasn't familiar with Wichita. And all of these little things that we're doing are, are adding up into creating a very significant impact in the way that we do economic development in our city. And we're pretty proud of it. And so pretty proud of the investment of a company that, uh, that has decided to bring their dollars to Wichita, Kansas and invest because we're a great place to do business in a global environment. And so we're pretty excited about that. Star bonds is something that I'm going to have Mr. Rigby talk about here in just a minute, but I want to, I want to before we do have that conversation, I want to talk about some of the great things that are happening right now in Wichita, Kansas, that makes us a great place to live, work, and certainly visit. We have a new airport that, that we continue to get tons of compliments on. We have over a billion dollars of investment in our downtown in, in the past 10 years. We have a new advanced learning library that you can go see that's coming out of the ground today that's exciting, that's going to be a gathering spot for a lot of people. We have major global companies that are coming to Wichita to call Wichita home and expanding here. We brag about the opportunity to, to um, it's more than just keeping Cargill. It's about winning Cargill. Because Cargill was looking at where they were going to call home for the next 50 years for their protein headquarters. And so it really isn't about keeping Cargill. It's about winning Cargill. And it's about because we do the things the right way. And we did it in a, in a way that's going to set the economic table for us for years to come. We have other companies like Coke and Spirit and SNT Media that's just exploding off the map here in Wichita, Kansas. And those are great stories if you don't know them to go look them up and see what's happening. So there's a tremendous amount of activity, whether it's downtown, East Wichita, West Wichita, North Wichita with the Innovation Campus. And everywhere you look, there's great things happening in Wichita, Kansas. And so I'm pretty excited about these star bond opportunities because when we kept Cargill, we kept Cargill without increasing anyone's taxes. We kept them without handing cash over to a corporation. When we're building out infrastructure to make better, Wichita a better place to live, we're doing it without raising taxes. We're going to put significant investments in neighborhoods and infrastructure and streets without raising Wichita's taxes. And I think that we're doing it in a significant way that's making a difference. Star bonds are part of that opportunity to make a difference without raising anyone's taxes. And I know it can be a little confusing, and that's why we want to talk about it again today. There's two significant projects that we're going to be able to use star bonds for. One of them is at 96 in Greenwich that's going to include a new soccer stadium, soccer fields, baseball and softball fields. And it's going to be tremendous opportunity to see Wichita embrace youth sports, embrace opportunities to watch a professional soccer team play. I know Councilmember Meissner, who has joined us, is pretty excited about that project. He's been involved in that heavily. But all it does is create a tourism district where we capture the sales tax in that new district and we use those dollars to pay off the infrastructure that we're building out. In the case of the, of the Starbond district out east, do you remember the number that we're going to add to that, Councilmember Meitzner? 20, 25 million dollars? This is going to create tremendous improvements to <clears throat> that entire complex out there. So instead of those tourism revenue dollars being captured and sent back to Topeka, we get to capture them and use it for infrastructure in Wichita, Kansas. Doesn't increase the sales tax, it just captures the portion of that new tourism district and uses the money for local infrastructure. The same way that they built Legends and some of those opportunities up in the um, Kansas City Wyandotte area. 
and now we're going to get to build some of that out in Wichita, Kansas. The other one, obviously, is the river corridor development that's going to enable us to build a new ballpark that some people have written about recently. And we think that that's a great opportunity to increase the quality of life in Wichita, Kansas, improve our river corridor, and make it the front door instead of just a back door to our city, and really change the quality of life for citizens. So to talk specifically about some of these star bond opportunities, I'm going to ask Scott Rigby to come up and share maybe more of the specifics, if you're ready to do that. Sure. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Um, yes, it's an, it's an exciting time to be here in Wichita. I've been here just a little, little over a year, uh, not knowing that we'd be having some of these discussions about these uh, sports and entertainment districts. So let me go first and talk about K96 and Greenwich area. Uh, that has been wildly successful with the new retail up in that area, especially with the Wichita Sports Forum that opened uh, in about December of last year. That's the one that has multiple indoor basketball, volleyball courts. They have indoor um, sand soccer, uh, and they have a great uh, trampoline park uh, for kids of all ages. I think I've even seen Councilmember Meitzner out there on the trampoline park. Uh, but as we started working with them and talking about that facility, they really started to talk about us, about how can we continue to grow youth sports, tourism opportunities in Wichita. And as we started working with them and talking with them, our eyes were drawn to the Stryker Soccer Complex, which is a great complex, but it's been uh, underused to this point. So the goal is we've talked with them and learning from their experience of how to market outside of the region, outside of the state. Uh, we've been working on a program of, of how we could renovate those soccer fields into multi-use sport fields. So it's not only soccer, it's football, it's lacrosse, it's field hockey, it's other activities that can use those fields. So what we're talking about, in essence, is renovating those fields to move them from grass, which are costly for water and, and uh, maintenance, to turf, to artificial turf, so they can be used year-round It'll have lights on those fields, as well, there other, as well as other amenities that we continue to explore on the north side of the property. Uh, we, we project it's about a $20 million project to do that. The great thing is that area up there in, in K96 and Greenwich has been uh, wildly successful. And as the mayor said, we'd like to capture some of those state dollars and use them here in Wichita. So we're excited about that. That'll be coming forward to council in early December for consideration for that project plan. It'll be an expansion of the existing district just to simply include the striker complex with the city it currently owns. Uh, in addition, we'll be renovating a little bit of the stadium. It won't be a complete renovation. It'll simply more to improve uh, the locker rooms and some of the um, restroom situations there. If we uh, move downtown, and to the mayor's point, as we met with the site selector last night with Brad Segal, who was here with the Greater Wichita Partnership to talk about what's going on in Wichita and what's the next steps. What we heard a lot from the site selectors, both in this visit and as we've gone out to Chicago and Dallas and other areas, is the distinguishing factors that a lot of cities are placing a focus on is placemaking. Uh, it's great to work eight to five, whether you're in the east or west or north or south part of the city or downtown. Well, how do we attract those people to stay and mingle after hours uh, in those areas? And how do we keep those visitors or here in for conventions or circumstances to find other activities to keep them interested? So we looked at that, uh, and the mayor has been to some great conferences. That he's had some feedback from professionals in the industry to take advantage of our riverfront. A lot of times in the, in the past of Wichita history, the waterfront has been kind of the back door. Uh, so the goal now that what we're talking about is how do we open up the riverfront? That is our front door. Everybody loves to be on the river. And so what we've talked about is opportunity to renovate the stadium over there, uh, to be able to attract uh, great baseball there, uh, to take advantage of the NBC and the enthusiasm there. So the, the idea that we have, and it's early in the concept, is to renovate the stadium and also provide opportunities to provide perhaps uh, a museum opportunity and adjacent to that to, to pay homage to baseball, to the NBC, and to other uh, associations that have been operating in and around this area. And to also uh, revitalize a lot of that vacant uh, 
asphalt that's been for parking for, for other uses. Uh, nobody likes sees of parkings in downtowns and our idea is to put it back into use. And so how can we use the, the baseball complex as a way to be an anchor in development? How we can bring development closer around as well as uh, enhancing Delano District. It is a great district to take advantage of. So we'll be not only doing improvements to the stadium but also to the waterfront. Uh, to continue the effort that River Vista has done to improve the waterfront on the west side, they're going to bring boats and bikes back to it. We want to continue that down the river. We want to talk about improving pedestrian access back and forth across the river between the Century 2 Performing Arts area into this district. And the goal is before or after event, how do we continue to keep those sports and tourism dollars and visitor dollars in Wichita after hours, early hours, or all hours here? So. Uh, again, that will be coming forward in December. Uh, we'll be going out to the neighborhood next week. We'll be at Councilmember Miller's DAB next week. We'll be also at the Delano Neighborhood Group next week. I think we're also at the Bike Ped. I think we're everywhere next week. Um, but we're here to talk uh, to them about what's going on in their district. It's, it's, it's a, it is an exciting time for Wichita. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. I'm sure they'll have questions after we wrap up here in a minute. So, um, really good stuff happening. I want to talk about our superstar now, our police chief, the one that everybody likes. Um, you know, he, he was invited to the White House, and he's such a rock star, he turned it down. I mean, who gets invited and turns it down? Because I'm sure he knows he'll probably get another invite. But he's, he's really going to... Um, talk about what we're doing in terms of public safety and supporting our police department. He has a real passion for what a talented group of officers should look like. And I'm going to ask the police chief to come up and say something about what he's doing in terms of recruitment, direction he wants to take the department. And again, um, we'll provide opportunities for questions at the end, but um, we'll bring up Chief Gordon Ramsey. Thanks, Mayor. And uh, there's a lot of people who don't like me. <laughs> um, but uh, I appreciate this opportunity. This is exciting for, for me. One of my most enjoyable parts of the job is hiring the next generation of police officers. And, um, you know, those that are going to be out on the streets interacting with the public. And uh, I am pleased to announce that we are launching a new recruitment campaign today. And, uh, you know, ultimately we want to hire the best and brightest candidates out there. Um, those people considering that uh, maybe have, uh, have never considered doing police work or, uh, you know, we've hired in the past, we've hired attorneys, we've hired engineers, we've hired former news uh, casters, reporters uh, that are in our midst. And for me, you know, I really like focusing on the, uh, those candidates that, maybe second career candidates that have done other positions, have you know been social workers or teachers or engineers. Uh, they bring a different perspective to policing and look at things through a different lens. You may recall the Wichita State uh, Organizational Assessment that called for us to uh, renew our campaign and our efforts in recruiting because we had seen decrease in uh, applicants. And that's true across the country. Applications are down. Um, while we may not be as bad as some areas of the country, you know, we want to do the best we can and really get the best people to serve our communities. And I know that in this community there are there's people with tremendous talent out there who would make great additions to our police department. And we're out, we're out looking for them. We're setting out to find them. And we're going to use a variety of methods to try and recruit them, whether it be social media, online advertising, and, and our traditional methods, such as job fairs and recruiting at universities. Um, we want to reach out to people who have never maybe considered being a police officer before. Um, as I mentioned, we're made up of uh, people who have done other jobs uh, in the community, the engineers, the lawyers, the um, musicians and veterans, the list really goes on and on. Um, you're going to see those candidates featured in this uh, recruiting campaign. Uh, I'd like to show you a quick video of um, the uh, recruitment campaign. Um, and some of you may recognize this guy as he's a familiar face to many. Hi, I'm Officer Carl Lemons with the Wichita Police Department. I've been with the department for 14 years. 
The reason I became a police officer because I was directly affected by a police officer in grade school. He showed compassion. At the same time, I was able to talk to him about certain things um, as they affected. Uh, he also let uh, students know that there was always an open door uh, that we could come into his office and talk with him. The most rewarding part of becoming an officer is that uh, you know that what you do directly affects uh, people within the community. Uh, whether it be adults or kids, uh, you know that your interaction directly affects how they view officers and how they view uh, you as a person. But everyone that signs up to be an officer, um, eventually, if, if they hadn't thought about it, they realize that uh, we do a job most of the public uh, does not do, and we do it um, for the safety of the public. If you're thinking about becoming an officer, uh, make sure that this is something that you definitely want to do. You're dedicated and committed to being an officer and doing it for the right reasons. Make sure that you learn everything that there is to learn about becoming a police officer and being a police officer, local and state laws. Officers on this department, the Wichita Police Department, are committed to each other, committed to the jobs that they do. Commitment is shown every day uh, throughout our line of work. Uh, we show up on calls, we back each other, we help each other out problem solving. We also help each other out with family lives as well. There's a lot of different things that we as officers experience that people in the community outside the department will not necessarily see. Uh, we all have family issues, uh, sick kids, things that matter to each and every one of us uh, we deal with as officers. And this family here is committed to each other. We're committed to the city and we're committed to doing a good job. So, uh, you know, I believe becoming a Wichita police officer is, is one of the most rewarding careers that you can have. Uh, it's a chance to help people during times of greatest need, uh, improve the community, and make it safer and become part of uh, our family. Beyond that, you know, the job offers a lot of benefits, uh, include paid training during the academy, health insurance, retirement programs, and opportunities throughout your career to increase your pay vacation, sick leave, and much more. The opportunities in this department really are tremendous, too. You have opportunities to work with animals, whether it be canine or horses. You have uh, a tremendous investigative uh, opportunities, whether it's uh, investigating financial crimes or homicides. Uh, you know, really what we're looking for, what I'm looking for in police officers is those that are good communicators, those that like to interact with the public, those that have a desire to serve the community and make it better, uh, who, those who really want to make a difference. So if you know anybody who is looking for a new career, it might be someone who's dissatisfied with their current job, op uh, job options or someone who believes that they can make our, our city a better place, we would uh, encourage you to apply. You can visit us at wichita.gov backslash WPD recruits to learn more about the positions and apply today. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. So that really concludes what we um, were wanting to visit with everyone about today, and we'll open it up for questions. If there's any questions on any of the topics or otherwise, now's your opportunity. Yes, sir. I just had a question for the chief. Uh, chief, why don't you come up? What are the basic qualifications for somebody who wants to apply for uh... What are the basic qualifications for somebody who wants to uh work in the police department? Sure. Well, uh, at minimum of a high school diploma. Uh, obviously, we want people who, uh, who have been uh, involved in community service. It's not a prereq, but, um, you know, obviously no uh, serious criminal issues, no background issues. Um, those are kind of the basic. Any age limitations? Uh, 21. 21. Correct. Are any age limitations? I don't believe there's any age limitations upward, no. I could still be a police officer? Sure. You'd have to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> there is some physical fitness requirements. We're actually going through and, and uh, re-examining our current requirements to ensure we're up to uh, best practices. All right. Well, thank you all for coming today. Appreciate the opportunity to share some really good things happening in our community.